people. And in today's webinar, we're going to be talking all about the world of analysis. And joining us to do just that is Molly MacArthur. Hi, Molly. Hi, thanks for having me here today. No, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know you've got a PowerPoint and I know you've got a presentation to give, so I'm going to hand over to you and let you uh, tell us all about analysis. Brilliant, thanks so much. Okay, so yes, today I'm going to be talking to you about um, data and analysis in marketing and why that's so important. And sometimes when you hear data and analysis, it can sound like one of the less exciting parts of marketing. I know you've been hearing all about social media this week and um, data analysis can sometimes seem a, bit, seem a bit boring, but understanding the analysis and being able to interpret that really can um, help you get ahead in your career. And I'll explain a little bit how um, it can do that later on in these slides. So just a quick um, overview of what I'm going to go through today. I'm going to talk, quickly introduce myself, and then I'm going to talk about marketing apprenticeships, um, because that's the route that I took into marketing. And we know that a lot of you have been asking questions around marketing apprenticeships this, over the last couple of weeks, so we'll cover that. And then we'll go into why is analysis important? What will you use it for? What is meant by return on investment and how do you measure that? And what analysis tools might you use once you get into marketing? And um, I'll talk to you about a few um, free tools that you can use after this to get ahead and find out more about those. Um, and then the last point that I'll touch on is about how CIM can help you in your career. So... Um, I'm Molly and I'm the Digital Marketing Manager at the Charter Institute of Marketing. Um, all of my previous roles have been very social media focused, so I, I'm a digital marketer but I specialise in social media management. Um, and at the Charter Institute of Marketing, the Digital Marketing Manager role covers everything from SEO and PPC to social media, um, email marketing and things like that, so quite a broad um, digital marketing role and analysis comes into every point of those email uh, PPC, SEO, our paid and non-paid advertising, everything um, is analysed through our data and analytics. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so although I'm at the Charter Institute of Marketing now, I first started out my career at Legoland Windsor when I was 16. So it was my part-time job um, whilst I was at sixth form and doing my GCSEs. And although I was not one of these happy looking people in these suits here, I used to sit in one of these little blocks that you can see on screen selling tickets um, on my Saturdays and school holidays. Um, but that was where I really found out how I learned. I was finding that I was learning far at a much faster pace about the world of work and things I wanted to know about at my part time job at the weekend than I was sat in a classroom. And so that really made me, when it came to deciding whether or not I would go to university, and um, that's really what made me look into apprenticeships. I knew that I needed to be out there, I needed to be experiencing things and interacting with people, and I it really helped me to figure out how um, how I learn. And so yeah, I'll go on to talk about, a little bit more about apprenticeships now. So with a marketing apprenticeship, as some of you might already know, you sign up with a apprenticeship provider um, and then they sometimes help you to find a job or it can work the other way around. So you'll find a job and then you'll um, sign up to an apprenticeship scheme with a provider um, and you'll spend, it typically you'll spend um, five weeks in a work placement and then one week in a college or some sort of facility learning about um, marketing along with um, other people in your sort of situation, new to marketing, um, other apprentices and things like that, um, which can be really helpful. Actually, I know um, a lot of the appeal of university is experience and how great that is, which is um, which is wonderful. But you sort of get to experience that a little bit with the apprenticeship route as well. You get to um, work alongside and build connections with people that you will stay connected with throughout your career. You're all starting from a similar sort of point, brand new to the marketing world, and then you sort of progress together, which is really nice to see. So you do form like a tight knit community with other apprentices that you um, join your course with, which is great. Um, another sort of a couple of the benefits of um, marketing apprenticeships is earning while you learn, which is great. Um, you get a recognised qualification at the end of it. And as I was saying before, you gain work experience on the job. You're not sat in a classroom as often as maybe you would at, um, in the other routes into marketing and it improves your employability. But all routes into marketing are really, really valuable. It really just comes down to um, looking at how you learn. And there are so many tools online now that you can look at um, to assess the way that you learn, how you best interpret um, different things. So I definitely recommend sort of checking those out if you're considering um, 
an apprenticeship route into marketing, it's definitely worth sort of looking at your learning styles and figuring out if that's what's right for you. Um, but whether you decide to first um, find employment and then take a professional qualification or you decide to go to university or you decide to get an apprenticeship, all of those are really, really valuable. There's none that are better than the other that will open up more opportunities than the other. They're all really, really valuable. Um, and one thing I would say is that you don't have to stick to one route. If you decide to do a professional qualification, um, the door to apprenticeships or university doesn't close at 18 and you can always decide to do that later. So if you wanted to go into the work placement and then later down the line you decide I'd like to, to join onto an apprenticeship, you can absolutely do that. Or if you want to join university and do a degree later in your career, once you sort of you're sure that marketing is what you want to do, you can do that as well. So um all the options are open. So and now I'm going to talk about why analysis is important. So in marketing more often than not you've got a large budget and you need to justify why you're spending it where you are so for example if we'd trialed putting 100 pounds on tiktok advertising last month and we wanted to really up our spend because we were seeing it was working we'd really need to pull together different data points from from lots of different places to to justify that spend it's a sort of um similar to if you were trying to convince your parents to let you have a dog you'd sort of build a business case as to why having a dog is really going to benefit your family and you and you'd you'd pull things together so similar when you're in a work environment you're trying to build a case you've got an idea and you really want to make something happen working with data um will, can really back up your argument so in marketing a lot of there's lots of people with lots of expertise but if you're the one that brings the data and the facts um, it's it's really useful to back up your points you can't and um, can't argue with the data so it's really useful to have um, so things that it's used for is um, digital auditing so you might want to know how your website's performing um, so you'd look at things like the user journey are people coming to the website and bouncing straight off or are they going through to buy your products and um, so you sort of analyze the data to find that out um, you'd use it to plan optimize campaigns so looking through data you can really quickly find out if are all your leads coming through from Facebook or are they all coming through from Instagram or um, your email advertising but you sort of don't know that until you look at the data um, and it can tell uh, the data can tell really interesting stories about your audience and there's I'm sure you're all aware of um, the scary amounts of detail of data that companies um, can get on you at the moment. But it's, there's lots changing with that at the moment with um, third party data laws and things coming in, lots of changes there. But things like down to where you live and um, average household salaries and your interests and other browsing behaviour, um, digital marketers at the moment have access to a lot of that, so scary amounts of detail. And that's how you get those ads on Instagram or TikTok that are really, they feel like they've read your mind when they pop up, we have just been speaking about it and magically it's there, um, but they're just very clever at pinpointing different different bits of data and piecing it together and, and painting a picture about you and figuring out what you're in interested in. Um, so yeah, that's the main the main sort of areas on um, analytics. And so if you've got a marketing campaign, um, typically sort of marketing campaigns, they can run from two weeks to to a year long. It depends on the sort of company that you work for, but you it would typically sort of temperature check a couple of weeks in to see how things are going. Um, is the this campaign achieving the KPIs that you've set out. So typically at the beginning of every campaign, you'll say you're putting any budget or resource towards the campaign. You'd want to know how many conversions, so how many people are going to buy your product or service off the back of that. Um, conversions can also be things like signing up to a newsletter. And so you'll have KPIs, you'll have set numbers that, of things that you need to achieve um, for each of your campaigns, and then you'll check in to make sure you're in line with that and you're doing that through data analytics it's sort of like when you're at school you wouldn't get to the end of 15 years of schooling and then um decide to do a test to see if you've achieved what you wanted to achieve there's sort of different pinpoints throughout your um schooling life that you sort of check to see if you're on track and it's very similar with um, marketing campaigns and businesses you regularly check in to see how things are going and that you're not blowing all of your budget on the wrong um, advertising channel so um then on to what is meant by return on investment so 
return on investment is calculated by subtracting um, the initial value. So whatever, whatever you put into a campaign versus what you're gaining back from that. So if we spent um, £100 on a training campaign, but we made £200, we had to subtract £100 from £200 to figure out what um, overall that had made us. And looking at the, ultimately, for every every business wants to make money. Um, and that's, that's what each campaign comes down to. So where we can look at different sorts of um, insights and engagements um, with various different analytics, ultimately what it comes down to is um, the return on investment and how much value it's adding um, to businesses. So that's how that's calculated and um, what we typically report on. Um, so the tools that you can use to find out more about this sort of data, um, most companies will use um, Google Analytics and with Google Analytics you can, as I was saying before, you can find out a huge amount of detail. You can find out um, how many times somebody has visited your site. So if you went on um, New Look website right now, this is the sort of information if you can see here that they'd be seeing from you, they'd be able to see um, how long you spent on the site, how many different pages you viewed on the site and um, they'd probably be able to they'd get a good guess at your age and um, roughly your location depending on the settings that you have and um, they'd know exactly how much time you spent any buttons that you clicked if you played a video or if you didn't if you downloaded something or if you entered a competition there's so many different data points that are collected on every single site that you visit and um, that that can then be seen in the background but um, as I said a lot of this um, is changing with um, data laws, privacy policies and um, third party cookies. But at the moment, there's a um, crazy amount of data. But if you're interested in finding out more about Google Analytics, um, if you just Google Google Analytics courses, there are so many free courses online that you can join that are really good. And it, it just gives you the opportunity to sort of get in and play around with the different things and um, manipulate the data in lots of different ways, um, which is really useful. I think the best way to learn about data analytics is just jumping in and getting started so you can watch a lot of different videos on youtube and things about how people um pull different bits of data from google analytics but i think the best approach um is typically just setting up a an account or a, um joining one of these free courses and you can you can play around with it and learn very very quickly through there And then um, on to how can SIM help you? So I'm not sure how much you've heard about CIM so far in your talks over the last couple of weeks, but CIM is a not-for-profit organisation. Um, so I'm not trying to get you to buy anything or anything right now. Um, we are genuinely here to help marketers out with their careers and um, support marketers through their personal development um, from right from getting into marketing right at the beginning to um, right through to re retirement. So we have lots and lots of free resources um, if you head to the CIM website, you'll see a um, get into marketing page, which will really help if you're in that sort of space where you're still trying to figure out if you should get into marketing or not, or which sort of route you should take. Um, that's a really helpful web page to go to. Um, and it, it talks you through sorts of steps that you take um, to go about getting into marketing. There are so many free resources on our website, um, things like webinars, blogs, articles, um, we also have a CIM marketing podcast, which is available on all the sort of typical places that you can go and listen to and hear from lots of marketers about their careers and um, their experiences in marketing. And it's sort of really valuable if you're in that space of trying to decide if marketing's for you. I definitely recommend going and checking out that podcast and looking through our um, content hub on our site and all of our different resources that are available there. And then sort of as you start to get into marketing and progress through your career, we have um, different training courses. We have hundreds of different training courses on different topics. So marketing has so many different specialisms. You could go as broad as just being sort of general marketer, or you could be a PPC specialist or an SEO specialist. So you can really drill down into lots of different areas. Um, so we have training courses that cover um, a whole range of those, which you also find on our site. And then we have our qualifications. So if you were looking to um, get into marketing through finding an employer, and then um, progressing your education through that, you could um, look into our professional qualifications, which range from level three right through to level seven. Um, and then 
with our professional qualifications, if you decide to go to university and do a degree, um, many universities with their marketing degrees will be SIM accredited. So if you're looking, looking out for a degree, make sure um, you pick one that's SIM accredited. And then that what that means is that when you finish your degree, you're you've nearly also completed a CIM qualification, which is really sought after by employers when you're looking for a new job and um, once you finish the university. So you only instead of having to complete um three modules over a 12 month period, you either have to complete one or two modules to complete your CIM qualification. So um it's definitely one to look out for as a sim accredited degree. And most of um the universities in the UK um sort of are sim accredited but you can um there's a list on our website under um graduate um, SIM accredited degree page, sorry, that you can check if your university is. Um, and then coming to the end of um, the presentation, if you would like to sort of keep up to date with what we um, are doing, everything that's happening in the marketing industry, you can follow us on Instagram, so it's SIM underscore marketing. We um, will soon have a um, someone that completed this virtual work experience um, at the beginning of this year, and um, we'll be doing a live Q&A soon on our um, Instagram feed so it's definitely worth going over and following us and checking that out and we'll have lots of sort of content on there coming up about getting into marketing um, so do feel free to head over there and give us a follow. Well thank you so much Molly for such a wonderful insight into the world of data and analytics and of course marketing as well and actually um, we've got a few questions coming through in fact the first would be and I think it's the most ask questions throughout these sorts of chats because I know you said there were different routes i.e the apprenticeship or university what sort of subjects are required to go into marketing if any and what sort of grades are we talking it's so it depends what what route you're going to take I think so many different um, subjects at university could help you get into marketing if you wanted to do English or psychology and um, there's so many different ones you could, or even a more creative degree, you could apply that to marketing because there's so many different specialisms. You have within our marketing department, we have a whole creative team of graphic designers, video editors, and you have right through to the more technical people that look at the data and analytics and um, and then the social media and, and writers. So there are so many different um different topics that you could take if you wanted to do a business degree I think that's also particularly um would be a particularly good one um because that sort of gives you the broader broader topic and then it, often there are modules that focus on marketing within that so I'd say it's really quite broad and in terms of grades that you would need to get um if you're looking to sort of to get into um like a, a good apprenticeship scheme you can you can go in straight from GCSE level so as long as you have got your maths and English GCSE, um, I, some it varies between the different programs, but you can get into a, um, an apprenticeship program with maths and English um, GCSE. And um, but typically, they, I think they ask for about five. And it also depends on your employer. So you're not just trying to um, impress your apprenticeship provider. You need to to get employed. So it's um, it is still very important to focus on your. Um, your grades so that you can find employment to then get into an apprenticeship or if you're finding employment and then taking on a professional qualification. Thank you Molly and we've had a question here I know you touched on your sort of part-time job in Legoland um someone's actually asked what part-time weekend job would you recommend for sixth formers who are looking to go into a future of marketing? I really think that when you're sort of at the age where you're in sixth form any sort of job where you're interacting with other people and working as part of a team or interacting with customers is really, really going to help you in your career, whether you decide to go into marketing or not, because it just gives you a much um, broader view of the world and of how things work and of how uh, people interact with each other in the workplace, which I think is sort of an underestimated skill. Before I, I started my first job at Legoland, I had no idea what it was like in a work environment and what people did in offices and um, any exposure I wouldn't say there was a particular area that is going to benefit you more what you could do um there are you can sort of alongside your um getting a part-time job you could sort of look at um maybe starting a, a either blog or social media channels that sort of relate to your area of interest that will help sort of build up your your skills in marketing um but yeah I think any job really will help you Thanks, Molly. And what would you say then is more 
more valued by employers, apprenticeships or university degrees? I think over the last few years, that's really shifting. I think um, maybe 10 years ago, all the employers were looking for a university degree. And sometimes, you, I, I you know, have to admit, you will see that now. You'll still see some of the bigger employers that will put as a requirement on their job specs that they would like you to have a university degree. Um, often, if you actually apply for the job, they're not what really matters to them is that you are you have the skills and the experience and um, although it's a sometimes a requirement on some of these places it's, it's not actually necessary but most places are really open now to professional qualifications uh, CIM qualification is the second most um, sought after for candidates in marketing um, but yeah I think I, I wouldn't say that you could pick one over over the other I think they're both really really valuable Thanks, Molly. And what would you say one could do now in order to prepare them for a career within marketing? I think it kind of depends on the area of marketing that you'd like to get into. If you are more interested in the graphic design side, I would get really familiar with all the sorts of graphic design tools and maybe offer a charity some um, some volunteering there to see if you can help them out and sort of build up your portfolio to sort of showcase when you're ready to then um, go into the go into employment that you sort of have a bit of a background in it and you've been very proactive and things like even things like staying on top of um, the news in that industry so just checking in occasionally of things that are sort of happening in that area like if you were more interested in the technical side and the data analytics and marketing you might sort of keep up to date with uh, the current changes to third party data and things like that you keep checking in if you're more interested in the social media side of marketing i would absolutely start a page of whatever your preferred channel is of something that you're interested in um it doesn't have to be about marketing i think any employers if you're sort of looking to get into a marketing role if you've if you've managed to build up a following or, or an audience of something that you're interested in, if, it, if it's about cars or dogs or crafts, whatever it is, if you're building a community of engaged followers, that's going to be really valuable to them and their business. So um, starting up your own blog, website or social media page, I think will be really valuable. Thanks, Molly. And we've had a question here saying you mentioned SEO earlier. They've asked, what is that exactly and why is it important for businesses? Good question. Um, so SEO means search engine optimization. So when you're on Google and you're searching for um, a new iPhone or a absolutely anything, um, the websites that appear and the order that they appear in are based on um, a ranking. So if that website is optimized towards um, search term if that website had a lot of search terms that related to what you were searching for that's what would pull it up front and it would be appear first on the um on the on your search whether it's from google or wherever um and that's so important to businesses because if your seo ranking is really low and you're not appearing on the first three sort of results on google you're almost invisible online and it's really really hard to be seen and um, so many people are searching there's millions of searches every minute on google so it's really important that you're sort of appearing in the right place otherwise people aren't just going to going to know it's like if you were searching for something now you're not going to go to the third or fourth page of, page of google mm. to find something um, and making sure that your um site is optimized for seo is so so important and that that's can be quite a tricky task to keep on top of that because things change all of the time in the digital marketing space what google are looking for and things change all the time so um it's quite a, a specialist area of marketing but um there are there are so many different um areas to it, but that's the sort of gist of it thank you molly and what would you say then is your favorite thing about working within the marketing sector i think my favorite thing about working is the your ability to sort of have um creative control you can really sort of identify what needs to happen to improve things and run with it so particularly as i work in social media it's looking at things like um how we can improve our reach on social media what reels and trending things can we get be getting involved with what's what's happening what's everyone doing that we can sort of get involved with to um 
to boost our own profile and our own um, social media um, following things. So I think um, just the endless, endless opportunities and the really fast pace of it, things change all the time. It's like a couple of years ago, marketers wouldn't, wouldn't have looked twice at TikTok, but now it's like the biggest thing and everyone's um, trying to get on board with it. So um, yeah, the, the creativity of it, the how the data and insights play into it and, and the fast pace, I think it's probably um, one of my favourite things about it. Thanks, Molly. And I think the final question that we have here is, how do you get, how did you actually get your job at CIM? So I got my job at CIM, I'd already been in marketing for a few years. So I started out my marketing career um, as an apprentice, as I said, and that was for a small local business to where I live. Um, and that was quite a good, of, uh, picking a small local company was really good actually, because I got a exposure to every aspect of the business uh, i'd be running their social media and their website but then i'd some, sometimes also be organizing their deliveries and things like that so um i got a really wide exposure to a lot of different things and then i went on to work for um a global business a global lighting company that gave me even more exposure to it because um marketing to people in the UK versus marketing to people in Japan or Australia is so so different more than more than you sort of initially think and so it's really good to have a range of different employers that you work for to get a to get a feel for how different audiences vary and then so after I'd worked and um, did my apprenticeships and then I worked um, for the global lighting company for a while and that's when I got a digital marketing executive role with CIM um, and then went on to complete a professional qualification with CIM and then um, eventually progressed on to management with them. That's a, a brief summary of my career and how I got to where I am. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Molly. And I think uh, our final question that we have time for today is, what is your top tip for small business owners in terms of marketing on Instagram? Good question. So much, so much that I could say to that one. Um, I think for, for reach, on Instagram, absolutely need to be getting involved with reels, trending topics, um, posting through trending sounds. Um, Instagram reels are so important for that, and it'll give you a much wider reach than you'll get with feed posts. Um, but I would then use your um, feed posts to sort of engage and um, inform your audience around your product, and then use your stories to really connect with them. So if you're a small business owner, sorry. Um, you might want to go on Instagram stories and ask your audience um, like how, ma how many of you have purchased this product already. And it could be that 50% of your following have already purchased your product. And that's really going to influence the sort of content that you're pushing out there. You might then push more about how to make the most of your product or why you need a new one or another one or the latest edition of it. And then you can sort of leverage those that 50% that have uh, already purchased to convert the, the other 50% that haven't yet bought your product by asking them to drop in the comments what they thought of your latest product or and um, you can ask them if you're thinking about bringing out a new product what do they think of it what do they think of your you're thinking about rebranding what what do they think of these different colors and things like that I think just really as a small business I'd, I'd really engage and take as much insights as you can from your audience and don't be afraid to just ask them what it is that they they want but I'd yeah for reach um for growing your um small business I think posting consistently is so so important and uh, making sure you're showing up if you're committed whether you're committing to three posts a week or five posts a week and um, just making sure you're showing up not dropping off for six months because you've been it's so easy to do but um but yeah just not dropping off when things get a little bit busy and making sure you're consistent that's that's the easiest way to grow for sure Oh, thank you so much, Molly, for all of your answers there and for such a wonderful insight into the world of, sort of data and analytics and sharing your story as well. And um, thank you as well to everyone who's asked wonderful questions. I'm sorry if we didn't get time to answer yours, but hopefully we reached a nice broad range there. And I'm going to say a massive thank you to Molly again for taking time out of her very busy day to be with us. Thank you to all of you. For